welcome back everyone. Today we're, we're starting with Alexander Bakalo with Hunting Electronic Foxes. Hello lovely people, welcome. My name is Alexander Bakalo or YU7TUX, that's my call sign. And I'm a member of a great club which is called uh, Yankee Uniform 7 Alpha Oscar Papa. That's an amateur radio club from my home city of Zrenjanin. And they're uh, doing a lot of, a lot of interesting stuff in that hobby. And today we are going to try to make it a little bit um, closer to you. Maybe some of you I know that were involved in the hobby. Maybe back in the day 20, 30 years ago, or I don't know, half a century, two centuries. But uh, maybe there are some young people who never actually heard about the hobby, who never actually thought what that is. And in, in the you know, in this time of mass communication and internet, the usual thing is they ask, why why do you need a, you know radio station when you have a mobile phone? And except you know when Godzilla start start to you know run for you and he stomps all of the you know landlines what are you going to use and who are you going to call amateur radio operators of course welcome welcome young people yeah yeah you're now like everybody just look at them they're late yeah uh, <laughs> and um, the amateur radio hobby is not something that utilizes or gives you any, I mean, a couple of superpowers, yes, but no, no, nothing material or, or something like that. And uh, I, I usually say, like, we are better positioned than, you know, Freemasons. Whenever, wherever I went, there, there is one, you know, radio operator there. He is DevOps, he is, he is system administrator, or he is ex-CEO of the, that startup and so on. So, yeah, there are a lot of us. The hobby is not dead. It is transforming. So it is embracing uh, new, <laughs> new technologies. It is actually leading a couple of uh, those because uh, amateur radio enthusiast, enthusiasts are actually trying to experiment and um, determine the limits of the wireless technology mainly, but also everything connected to electronics and in general everything that should interest uh, intelligent people. But today's um, yeah, I, I hate this. Like, how, how do politicians do this? Like, you, you go like 10 centimeters. Do, do I have to look ominous? All right. Um, so, oh yeah, it's tiring. Today, uh, the plan was to have a short presentation just to let you know what is uh, fox hunting in context of amateur radio. And then, idea is. Uh, if somebody wants to, is this raining? No, it's the air conditioning. Air okay, okay, that's, yeah, that's, that's much better. <laughs> because the idea was to go after this short intro, to go into um, backyard that we have. We have a very nice backyard. It is really spacey. I, I don't suppose you, you, you walked, many of you, uh, through there, that, uh, in, in that direction in previous balcons. But today, there is a reason to do so. So we are going to plant um, hidden fox, and we're going to teach uh, you know anyone who wants to try to find it without you know using their senses other than ears, and um, yeah, that that would be a pra practical thing. One additional thing that uh, I kind of prepared for today, but you know you're going to be a better testers with me and the rest of the members of the amateur radio club is actually an adventure game connected to those um, hidden, so to say, artifacts or uh, stations. And each of them unlocks a part of the adventure story. So that, that's the idea, you know, the realization. I mean, I spent some time uh, creating that for Balkon. It is not fully finished, but uh, you can get the idea how it looks like. Um, anyhow, let's continue. So. Hunting electronic foxes. What, I mean, that, that's a general idea. We're going to talk a little bit about theory, not too much. We have a lot of like, um, we're doing this with, with very young, young children. 
because it's, it's not that complicated to explain the basics and to try out the basics. It's actually fun. Uh, we usually um, go with them on a football field or something like that and we tie their eyes and then uh, we teach them how to find, without looking, that hidden station. And that's, usually it, it, it goes well. They, they like it. And it is fun, actually. So uh, I was thinking about how can we make it uh, maybe a step further. And this is where this game actually got, comes in. But we're going to talk to the, about that in details later on. Uh, but what is, you know, electronic foxes and fox hunt, or how we call it, amateur, amateur radio goniometry. That's like, I don't know if, if it's an English term, but you know, in, in Serbian it's, it's called like that. Um, basically, it, it, it consists of trying to find, by different rules, of course, trying to find hidden um, radio stations by just using a receiver, much like this. So, there are a couple of models, of course, you can build it yourself, of course. Uh, we have this, which is you know, quite standard looking. You have an antenna up here, a uh, connector for headphones, so you can hear the signal from the hidden station, and a couple of potentiometers that uh, you know, help you tune and, and um, set the volume of, of the headphones as well. So this one, or it can look like Like this thing, like post-apocalyptic uh, gun for really hunting the electronic foxes. So, but, but the basics are the same. And we're going to cover that uh, later on in details. How, how do you actually go and how do you find it? Um, let me just switch another. So, um, you uh, probably heard about um, Orienteering, that's a pretty, I, not pretty, I'm old, so it's, it's, it's a relatively new um, sport, so to say, orienteering. You get, I don't know if anybody of you uh, tried that, I tried once and survived somehow, uh, but you receive a map of a certain area, it's a topographic map, very detailed one. Uh, it's usually a large section, so you need to run, you're timed, and you have your checkpoints you know, drawn on the map. And just using the compass and your knowledge of you know, maps, you need to run, and as fast as possible, you need to find, it looks something like this in the end. You know? uh, um, when you find the location of the, for, for the orient orienteering, it looks similar to this. This is for a fox hunt, but for orienteering, you have the same thing something like that, and you have NFC, like um, ring or something like that, and you just check in that you, that you find it. And they time your, um, your minutes spent to find the station, uh, not the station, the location, and they, you know, tag you. So this is actually a sport that was, um, so to say, created from fox hunting, because amateur fox hunting is older. So we were first, yes, no, not those guys. Uh, so, there are some things um, that you can determine by using this uh, receiving station. Like, you can determine when, when you turn left and right and around, you can determine where the signal is the strongest. So, you know that because those are a kind of directional antennas, they are not actually I mean, you can build a directional antenna and the receiver is better if you have the directional one, and for transceivers as well. But even if it is a dipole, it is a kind of like, you have minimum and maximum at a certain point. It's really uh, going to, to the boring stuff, but you know, the um, um, diagram of, um, what's it called? The radiation diagram for that antenna is like drawing a kind of that, uh, symbol of eight or you know infinity, which is you know fitting. So um, you have actually when you when you go and scan manually the area, you will hear the signal the strongest at one direction. But you don't know if the station is in front of you or behind you. So you then have to do a couple of other operations to determine if the 
station is in front or behind you. And then, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> and then, um, when you have map and you you draw the line, you know where you are, you know where the um, supposed line of the transmission is, and then you go to another location. You move maybe five, 50 meters or 100 meters, and then you crisscross those lines that you get. And uh, in ideal case, you would get a location of the station like that. But in <clears throat> reality, you probably need a couple of more points to, to get a better uh, location quality. So this is how you do it in, in, you know, in short uh, steps. <coughs> so uh, yes, as, as it's seen, uh, score is calculated based on the number of transmitters that you found and also the time that it took you to find it. So <clears throat> the faster you do it, the better it is. Uh, I'm here talking about the just there is competitions. There are competitions, of course. But it, it is also a fun activity. And not everybody should be competing anyhow, because that is not fun, believe me. But you can organize a fun activity. And in uh, North America, they, all, all, uh, they have something which we don't have. Of course, it is connected to cars, because, you know, cars. And uh, they are trying to find um, hidden stations by using cars, probably Jags or what, no, Ford or some big ass pickup trucks. And later on they go and burn some tires, of course, in the process. But um, <clears throat> the, the idea is the same. So there is a hidden station, you need to find it as quick as possible or to find the quickest route to the station by driving your car and then you win. And that can be fun, really. There is also a couple of other options that you can do the fox hunting, and one of them is like um, you're not actually moving, but you're having a team of your mates, um, like similarly crazy to your, you know, craziness, and they all have uh, stations and uh, they have their location and they listen from their location where the station is. And they try to figure out where the station is without going there, without actually going to <laughs> verify that the station is there. And they send the location to organizers. The closest one to predict where the station is wins. So you can do it by foot, you can do it by car, or you know, motor vehicle, or whatever. Or you can do it like this. And, um, but the principle is similar. So the, the whole point is to find something which is hidden, which, which cannot be seen by anything else by, but the radio receiver, and to do it as fast as you can. So no need for competition. It's always fun to try, and <clears throat> we are going to try it later on. So yeah, there is a you know, common brief history of <coughs> fox hunting. So. We had like goniometer first uh, created in 1907, <clears throat> so it had directional antenna bearing. And you know, if you maybe I I know that some of you created yeah yeah looking at you, so created um, pirate radios. So yeah, I, I I'm actually you know envious. <laughs> I wanted to do that. So if they want to hunt you, they're going to use the same technique but just probably a bit different um, uh, equipment. So maybe a little bit more serious police or military equipment. So it is still used if you have some <coughs> uh, station that you need to find. And also, I don't know if you know, there is um, obligatory in airplanes, like you have uh, what is called non-directional beacons which they listen, and then if all other sources of uh, navigations fail, uh, your trust tip pilot, probably not of the Boeing or some big passenger jet, but you know, if you're in a small <coughs> airplane that you know have propeller or it's from the Second World War, and you, you're lost in the fog or whatever, and your instruments are not working correctly, you can always rely on those NDBs, non-directional beacons, and this kind of thing to <laughs> figure out where the stations are. You know where the map, where they should be. You, you have the map of, of them. You have all of the locations. You know what they type 
and yeah, that's another thing. All of those stations that are hidden uh, actually are transmitting something. What do they transmit? Well, usually they transmit Morse code because Morse, Morse code is cool and it's simple to implement because it's uh, just a binary. There is a signal, there is no signal. You can <clears throat> do Morse with, with whatever continuous uh, signal that you just break or specific intervals of well, silence. So that is why it is called a continuous wave or CW in amateur radio as well. <coughs> so this technology is actually still being used and it's going to be used in the foreseeable future. So um, this is just the intro. So it can be one of the ways into the amateur radio hobby. There are many other facets of, of that hobby as well. So you can do, uh, you know, standard operator uh, work, which you can see. I mean, we're going to do some QSO, some connections on the station just um, next to that gaming machine at the entry. And or you can construct things or, you know, there, there are a lot of things. We had a presentation yesterday about the meteorological zones. So guys are hunting them as well. So that's very interesting and, you know, very fun activity if you want to be, you know, frozen in the winter or if you, if you like being in the mud and, you know, not finding the sound in the end. But yeah, it's fun. Uh, or you can, you can use satellites. We have colleagues which are specialized in satellite, satellite communication for amateur radio or all sorts of things, you know. So it's, it's not as simple like, yeah, just sit at the station and, you know, do, do connections. <coughs> so back to the, to the history. Oh, 20 minutes already. <laughs> okay. I thought it, it was nearing to end, you know. It's, for me, it's like, yeah. Uh, just kidding. So, um, in Europe, they started as a school activity, 1950s. Uh, back in the day, amateur radio was much more included in the, um, so to say, school activities all around the world. It was also in Serbia, it was connected, it was incorporated in a defense department, in a sense. <coughs> So the first European Championship in RDF was held in 1961, and we have um, Amateur Radio Union that standardized rules in 1993. Uh, <coughs> we have a games at, uh, in 2004, uh, competing 400 athletes from 29 countries and four continents. So <coughs> there are a lot of activity de there, and it is also one of the few activities of uh, amateur radio that you actually have to move your butt. So, yeah, that's, that's a plus side. Uh, obviously, I'm not doing that enough, but I'm going to start from Monday. <coughs> so, uh, how does it work? So, the traditional <coughs> RDF is the... Oh, sorry. <coughs> if, I die, if I die, just remember me <coughs> by this presentation or not. Okay, so the transmitters are set to transmit on one minute each. So if you have, you, you typically have a five transmitters transmitting uh, Morse code. You see here something that does not seem logical at the first sight. Uh, MOE, MOI, MOS, MOH, and MO5. But why is that? <coughs> because when it is <coughs> typed in uh, Morse code, the end letters, E, I, S, H, and 5, are actually a sequence of, um, and they, they call it a dits. So it's like dit, did dit, did did dit, did did dit, and so, and so on, so up to 5. So you can actually count <coughs> the dits, and you know what station are you <coughs> hearing. So, uh, of course, it, it's typing very slow, so even if you don't, no, the Morse code, you can, you know, just by using your super hearing and <coughs> you can identify the, the, the letters. And the uh, foxes that we prepared for today are just typing without MO, just typing E, I, S, H, and 5. So just the dots, like 1 to 5. <coughs> so, as we said, <coughs> We need to find the transmitters by taking directional bearings. So we go and scan the area and observe the signal strength. So we are searching for the flag, as I said, by 
comparing all the, the directions that we get, uh, drawing them on the map, and then trying to actually find on the map what we think the location of the station is. It's not that simple because as uh, my trusty fellow outage radio uh, operators know, there are different um, bands that behave quite differently. So if you have two meters, it's uh, different from, I mean, if you have 144 megahertz or 433 megahertz, it behaves, the, the wave behaves <coughs> differently. And why I said like two meters, because the length, wavelength of that uh, frequency is two meters. It really behaves differently than, um, for example, 40 or 20 meters, so 14 megahertz or uh, 80 or three, three and a half megahertz. Uh, that two meter wave is actually like, like a laser. It really can um, bounce off stuff. And you can imagine like trying to listen to the station and you think it is, you know, this is the direction of the station, but actually not. So actually it can be uh, bouncing out of rocks or the hard surface, out of, out of water. So this is all, um, you know, this is advanced. This is not something that, you're going to need the first step, but uh, what I'm <clears throat> trying to say, there is a gradation of the skill that you can build. I mean, it's easy to go to schools and to present some, something that you can enjoy in, in, you know, in a couple of times in, in the summertime, but in serious competitions, there are some serious um, knowledge that needs to be really gathered, and uh, you need to do it fast, so yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, as, as uh, okay, let's go back. Uh, okay, yeah, I, as I already said, the flag uh, that you find, it has a punch card or an electronic leader, reader. Leader, like, <laughs> yeah, Bovian. Okay, so electronic reader used to mark your scorecard, so you're <clears throat> scored by, based on that. So, yeah, and, uh, the, okay, so we did, yeah, this is traditional. We mentioned two meters, like two meter wavelength. So we have a propagation channel that we <clears throat> that we talked about. Uh, terrain really ups, uh, can affect the propagation of the waves, and it can lead you to believe that the station is somewhere where it is not. So there is one not so fun story, but life saving story from one of our uh, amateur radio members who was in the war, actually. And he, um, when there was this bombing of, of Serbia in 1999, and he communicated uh, with his peers by bouncing the, the signal out of some um, hill, which he knew it was rocky. And that hill got hit like 15 minutes after the communication ended. So, you know, the, the, even, even the big armies have problems in, you know, having those bounces of signals to determine where the actual end, friend or foe is. So it's not that easy. So the same <clears throat> thing goes in civilian, like recreational uh, application as a fox hunting is. So what is good for two meter fox hunting? It's easy to build antennas. Um, you can basically make one from a tape measure. I think we have like yeah, this, it, it doesn't really show, but it is a tape measure, actually. So um, <clears throat> you can easily build the uh, receiver. For 80 meter fox hunting, it's a bit more challenging to create a receiver, but, you know, a uh, receiver is, as, as it is here stated, it's less bulky. Uh, it has a sharp now, so uh, when you go off the track where the transmission line is, you really get a very crisp uh, loss of, of sound. Uh, we have a quite different propagation, so it, it doesn't quite behave as two meter. <clears throat> maybe it's easier, maybe not. So for example, this is one of the examples for the receivers, something like this, but this guy created another kind of antenna. You can have uh, loop antennas, for example, so some, some kind of directional ones. So th this is, th those are the rules. So um, usually uh, you do it in a public park. If you do it internationally, it's usually 10 by 10 kilometers. For local events, two by two. Uh, you get the maps provided uh, showing all of the major topo topographic um, 
mm, characteristic of the of the place that you're hunting foxes. <coughs> And uh, this is how it looks like. So you would receive something like this. Uh, we would prepare. I mean, hopefully we'll have much more detailed uh, story regarding the game that we are doing in connection to this RDF. I mean, to my knowledge, it's, it's never been done this way. So it might be, I mean, <laughs> but it doesn't mean that it is good that it wasn't done before. It just might mean that it's a stupid idea, but we will not know until we try. So you're probably going to receive a map of interior uh, backyard of Balkan. <coughs> and then the, the same rule applies that uh, we are going to show you when, when we go outside. For example, we have here, uh, yeah, I, I have to stay close to those mics. It's really annoying to, to be so stationary. So this is actually the, the uh, one of the foxes that we prepared. What we have inside, it doesn't show really it's uh, Arduino Pro Mini. It's connected to a specific, let me, I think I have one with, yeah. No. But anyhow, so it has Arduino Pro. It has a transmitter for uh, three and a half megahertz, uh, which is using just a crystal. So it's not anything complex like later if uh, you know electronics or something simple crystal on a specified frequency uh, and uh, it has the RTC module so to hold the time so that you know when you start the stations it knows like first station is going to transmit for the first minute the second one for the second minute and so on and so on so it's it's simple as that so uh, we're probably going to share the code once we are <laughs> not too embarrassed by it so we have uh, like yo7aop.com and that thing really needs a bit more, you know, love and tender. So, but yeah, the plan is to, when we hone all of the rough edges, to, to share everything so anybody can try. Um, I think, uh, yeah, <clears throat> I think we can finish with the, I mean, the, the whole idea is not to have too much of the, you know, blah, blah and, and theory but just to go outside and try it out. So, and uh, since the game was planned, we also had like, uh, you know, symbolic prices, like we have a ham radio moonshine that, you know, my mother-in-law makes, so it's, it's great, Rakia. <clears throat> we call it for this event, we call it, uh, we have two names actually, for uh, odd and even, you know, years of the Balkan. So the f last time it was radioactive bet, this year it's radioactive red, so yeah, but it's it's a good one. So uh, please uh, just feel free to join us. We are going anyhow to try out all of those stuff and the application and the foxes in the in the backyard of the Balkan. We're going to be here for maybe two hours, something like that, uh, around that. So everybody is is uh, free and welcome to join and we can discuss and you can try out to find <coughs> the, the foxes and try out in practice how this really works. Because all of these things is just words. So you, the, the whole idea is to move you to maybe spark uh, some, a little spark of interest in the topic and to go and try it out. Because if you wait like, yeah, I'm going to do this and like, yeah, sure, it is interesting, but uh, just after, I learned how to play the uh, harp for whatever, oboe or something like that. That's on my bucket list. And then after that, I will try RDF. No, just new things that you discover every day. Just try to try it out because you know, you're know you not going to try it uh, for sure if you not try it soon. So uh, thank you. I don't know if there are some. Thank you for having no questions. <laughs> but no, no, seriously, if you, if you want to ask something, ask Boris. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Ask me, and I will ask him if I don't know, which I want. So yeah, shoot me, not. <clears throat> All right, any questions? All right. OK. Let's... Sorry? Three, five, eight, what's the crystal frequency, Boris? 3.579, 3.579 megahertz. 
if they're going to transmit. <laughs> we're going to see, we're going to see. I, I, I spent all night assembling them, and I hope that some of them will work. But, you know, today is the, you know, baptism in fire. Yeah, uh, all right, all right. I don't know how to, you know, understand this. <laughs> like, no questions, okay, but it's even better, even better. I hope that you will join us, really. And uh, thank you for, for coming, thank you for listening. And now it's time for action. If you, you're welcome, let's, let's join and talk. You can ask whatever, you know, it, it is not going to be connected only to fox hunting. Whatever you, you want to ask us, metal satellites, sounds, uh, telegraphy, whatever, you know, whatever sparks your interest. We are here. Thank you.